So I always been drawing when I was a kid, but I kind of just、mm-hmm. stopped it after I was in like high school until I saw the movie Zootopia, and then yeah, when I looked at fan art and the concept art of the movie, and I realized I could be an artist, I could work from just drawing, and then that's when I started to draw again and take it more seriously, and then I've been drawing ever since. You're tuning into the Voxenberger podcast, where we bring you closer to the Asian furry fandom, one episode at a time. I'm Michael the Matcha Fox, and today we're visiting China to talk with Peach, a Chinese furry artist. In this episode, we begin with what it's like growing up as a furry in mainland China. We then discuss Peach's journey of becoming an artist, how mainland Chinese people outside the fandom discuss the community, and finally, some advice on the self-taught artist himself. Unfortunately, due to a headache and nasal congestion, Burger won't be joining us for this episode. But don't worry, he'll be back in the next one. So, without further ado, sit back, enjoy some Sichuan hot pot, and enjoy the show. So, welcome, Peach, to the podcast. <laughs> Hi. I don't know what to say. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. Yeah, yeah. How how does it feel、uh, to be on the pod? Um, I don't know. I've never done anything like this before, so <laughs> yes, yeah, quite nervous. <laughs> It's okay. Yeah, like like. Well, I think the important thing is that you have fun. Yeah.、Um, yeah. I, I I think that's what we usually tell people.、Um, Well, how about we start with introductions? Just you know, something really basic as we always do. So, could you please tell us your name? What your persona is and where where do you come from? Okay,、um, my name is Peach and my persona is Peach. <laughs> and、uh, I right now I live in the UK, but I am going back to China, which is where I'm from,、mm-hmm. in a few days. So yeah. Yeah. What kind of animal is your persona? I think that was the question. Oh,、uh, okay. <laughs> Actually, I don't really have a species for him. Oh really? Because when I designed him, I didn't really have an idea on what I want to design, so I just put in everything that I like,、mm-hmm. like basically all my favorite features from every, you know, just all the features that I like, and put them all together, and then I just、yeah. created like this character. <laughs> yeah, and and we'll flash a picture of、uh, Peach on the on the screen for um yeah you know for the audience to see because like my impression was that you were like a canine. Yeah, it has a canine nose, and yeah, somewhat of a canine, I think. <laughs> the ears, the nose, like the muzzle, kind of remind me of like, well, I guess like a dog. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You mentioned that、um, you、uh, are originally from China, and then you're like living in the UK. Well, you're, I guess like you're staying in the UK right yeah, now. Yeah, I'm staying I think in the UK right now. You mentioned I think you were seeing your partner in the UK right now, or yeah. I'm currently living at my boyfriend's house、mm-hmm. right now, so yeah. Nice. Can you tell us how you got into the fandom? I don't really remember much. I guess I'm more just slowly introduced to it as I was looking at fan art of movies that I like.、Mm-hmm. So it all started. Can you tell us some of the movies? Yeah, I think the very first one was Kung Fu Panda.、It's、oh wow. A long time ago, like I would just yeah, start yeah, looking yeah. at some fan fan art, like but I wasn't really, I didn't really know what furry is. I just saw fan yeah, art, yeah. but I was still mainly looking at like fan art of Kung Fu Panda. And then after a while,、yep. after I watched Zootopia, that's when I first know what a furry is, like have an idea of what it is.、Mm-hmm. And then it just slowly introduced me to more and more like、yeah. art. And then more and more, and like about furries after that, so it's around that time where I got introduced to the furry fandom. So Kung Fu Panda, like like like, were you watching that? Like that came out in two thousand eight. For me, that would be like, oh gosh, that would be like middle school for me. <laughs>、um, <laughs> uh, but like, you did you watch it like intentionally? Like like you said, oh here's a cool like here's a cool like Kung Fu movie, but with animals like. I want to watch it, or was it like something that you like? Your parents took you to go to watch, or it's more just accidentally stumble across it. Like, yeah, 
like on uh, the TV? Was it showing on the TV or did just you actually go to on theaters? My computer. I would just oh, okay, okay. wanted to watch a movie and I saw, uh, why not watch this? I heard so much about it, you know, and I just yeah. played it. And Jack actually, Black. I didn't start it. I didn't uh, watch it when it came out. It's like years after it came out. Oh, yeah. And yeah, then, yeah. yeah. At the time, there's already a second film. And then. Right, right. So I just watched the first two, and that's when I like started like say oh this movie is actually really good and i really like the characters and then i'm not really caught up on the movies um i know there's like four like the third one came out in 2016 like i'm I'm reading this on wikipedia the fourth one is like in production um but then they also have like tv series in addition to the movies um but for zootopia that one i feel like we talked about this like over telegram like a month ago but yeah that one was pretty big for me like that Mm -hmm. was the movie for me that 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 basically made me want to be a fox like i knew what a furry was before zootopia it's just more like it basically pushed me in the right direction zootopia didn't make me a furry but i would say that it definitely like pushed me in the right direction and then after i saw nick i was like yep yeah i definitely want to be a fox now (laughs) uh i think for me even after zootopia i was still not like a full-on furry it still take like Mm -hmm. a couple of years of slowly like just knowing more and more about it and then got like, introduced like were you to looking at like more and more fan art and stuff yeah more and more fan art and then mm-hmm. i i started to draw as well like because right. of like the fan art i looked at and then i tend to like to draw like anthro characters more than human characters yep. and that's when i started to like really like like the furry kind of you know characters I think I'm kind of jumping a little bit ahead, but you did mention that you you lived in Macau before. So, like, was this happening while you were living in China or was this happening while you were living in Macau? Oh, uh, in China, because oh, okay. my first 19 years of my life, I was living in China. So mm-hmm. majority of my life is I spend in China. So I guess you were just like using like VPN to access like these like. Yeah like certain sites that would have been blocked i guess you're like accessing them through vpn Mm -hmm. i I think that's so interesting because like a lot like a lot of us you know outside of china um a lot of us don't really know what china is like and we're always like really curious to know like how do chinese furries interact with other furries because obviously like the firewall is one thing and so it's like i always find that so fascinating because most people outside of china don't use things like wechat for example like like WeChat yeah. or QQ, like there's already like a few barriers that that exist. I guess I should say there are a few barriers that exist. I don't know. Like like I I, I always I always wanted to meet more Chinese furries. <laughs> so so I, I'm I'm glad I got to meet. You. I was like, I was like ecstatic when I first came across your uh, Twitter. I think yeah, we met on Twitter first. Yeah yeah. I think I might disappoint you on this because I'm not very connected to the Chinese furry community because majority of my exposure to it is from western media and yeah yeah the western side of the community so so i don't really know much about like the chinese furry situation but Mm -hmm. i think people do use twitter a lot for the art and there's also other social media like weibo which is like our version of twitter and i think a lot of people use that Mm -hmm. you know and yeah i guess people just get to know it through those media i think how about i ask something that uh i'm I'm still really curious about like tell us about your childhood though like like tell us where did you grow up how was it like growing up in china um growing up in china is uh is definitely not the best i I think for some people it's Mm -hmm. i think it's different for everyone i guess uh, yeah. But for me, because my ch- uh, my parents split up when I was very young, so mm-hmm. I always just been moving between different places in China. Uh, I spent my first ten years in Guangzhou, which is like the southern area, yeah, of China. Yeah. And then later on, I moved to the uh, like the middle part, which is Chongqing, like in the Sichuan area. I think you probably so heard you, that you were born in before. Guangzhou. Yeah, Guangzhou for like mm-hmm. my so first you, So years. you probably grew up speaking both Mandarin and Cantonese? Yeah, I speak both Mandarin and Cantonese. Mm-hmm. And then later you moved to Chongqing. Yeah. How is it like though, like the diff- the difference between uh, Guangzhou and, and Chongqing? 
I think the majority differences is on the food. I think、mm-hmm. because if you've been to China, you know, like pretty much every area has its own like unique cuisine. And yeah, then yeah. In the south, is stuff are more plain. You know, it's all steamed, very very healthy. You know. Oh really? Yeah, and then when you go a bit to the, like the middle part, like the Chongqing Sichuan area, everything is extremely spicy. It's covered yeah, in chili. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And <laughs> when I was first in Chongqing, I actually really enjoyed the food, and it's very.、Mm-hmm. Then I didn't find it that hard to adjust to it, but yeah. Yeah. And now I'm definitely prefer the food in. The Chongqing area over the south, yeah, yeah. even though I was so you, born... you like mala, you like all、yeah. the mala stuff, yeah, yeah like spicy, mala hot the... pot maybe.、Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I love mala. Well, I I didn't eat a lot of the the mala seasoning、um, mm. in 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 um in the states、uh, where I、yeah. grew up.、Uh, we didn't really eat mala. That's more of a Chinese kind of food.、Um, you know, so I'm not Chinese, so like we didn't really grow up or make Chinese food. So I didn't really get introduced to the mala seasoning. Until I came to Taiwan, which was about like 2017, but I I love I love、uh, spicy food.、Um, yeah. Like I was telling you earlier, I just got back from from Thailand from Thai Tales, and as you know, like a lot of Thai food, like generally speaking, Thai food is spicy.、Yeah. Gen- generally speaking, there's there, there's a lot of spicy food in Thailand, and I loved it. Yeah, like I believe it or not, I never got diarrhea. <laughs> um, like or or this time, like I mean, maybe maybe the last time I did, but this time I didn't get any diarrhea despite eating spicy food like half the time. <laughs> I had I had quite a、uh, well, not every single day, but like half the time I was having spicy food and I didn't get diarrhea. But like, I'm definitely a I'm definitely a fan of spicy food.、Um, yeah, my parents are from Laos, so we would always make spicy food like a lot of times、um, back at home. Well, I mean, back when I was living with my parents, I should say.、Hmm. But I, I I actually have not been to China before.、Hmm. Yeah, I actually haven't been to China before. So like, I'm I'm always curious. Like, where you grew up, though. Like, did you grow up like downtown, downtown, like in the in the urban areas, or were you like in the countryside? Or、uh, I was usually just like outskirt of the city area. Yeah, you call it Jiaochu,、yeah. right? Yeah, I think so. It's just yeah, not far, not too far away from the main city. You know.、Mm-hmm. But it's not really like that far away. Yeah, because you lived you lived in you lived in mainland China most of your life, and then you'll have to remind me. You later moved to Macau. So when、yeah. when did you move to Macau? I moved to Ma- Macau a few years ago. I'd say around 2020 is when I moved、mm-hmm. there,、uh, because at the time I didn't really have a job, and then my dad's like, "Why don't you come?" Like work for me, and I'll teach you how to do like make jewelry. And I say, yeah,、mm-hmm. why not? I don't have anything else to do. Right. And but at the time, I already wanted to be an artist, but I just didn't have the skill to you know do it yet. So I just keep the art in the like in the back while I was while I'm working for him. And then until recently, I was able to like make a career off of like my art. So I stopped working、mm-hmm. for him. Uh, so now that I don't have to work for him, I think once I'm back in China, I'm gonna move back to like the mainland China, so not in Macau anymore.、Mm-hmm. I think. And we were kind of talking about this a little bit, but like you want to go back to mainland China because it's cheaper, right? Yeah. Like like、and、compared think, compared to Macau. Yeah, everything is like half the price compared to Macau, and oh wow, I, yeah. <laughs> and I also just prefer the. I don't know. I could.、Uh, It's hard to say when you talk about China because there are some really good stuff and there's some、mm-hmm. not so great stuff. So I think、mm-hmm. I do prefer living in China because of the conveniences you get in China compared to Macau. Like things are cheaper and you get really good public transport、mm. and yeah, yeah. also just the、uh, I don't know if you heard this. App before is called Taobao. It's like the Chinese Amazon. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and yeah, exactly. I, yeah, Taobao. Yeah, I cannot live without that thing right now. Pretty much ninety nine percent of everything I own, I bought it from wow, Taobao. Wow, so Macau so, doesn't、yeah. have Taobao? I thought Macau it does. Been... Ma- yeah, Macau does have it, but there's a border between it. It takes like a day for your like you.、Mm-hmm, it takes、mm-hmm. one more day for your item to get crossed, and you have to pay、okay. an extra fee. For、oh, the yeah, package, yeah, so it、yeah. just it's just easier and also you know, 
Yeah. And cheaper. But, I guess. but I'm I'm kind of curious though. Like I, I know this kind of a I think again, this question like to a lot of us who haven't been to China, this is like a this is a question that we have. It's just like you're okay with sort of like living in the political atmosphere that China has. Like yeah. would you you're you're okay with that? Yeah, I think I think people definitely make it sound a lot worse than mm -hmm. it is, but it's not like I'm not saying it's great. It just depends on the type of lifestyle you want to live. If you wanna like yeah. just go out and just be really like talk about political stuff and mm -hmm. like be like gay i guess <laughs> it's it definitely a lot easier <laughs> yeah, yeah. outside of china yeah, like in china yeah. is not very well accepted to just go out wearing really you know out their clothes but i think in yeah, most yeah. places in most places it's fine like especially in like the city mm -hmm. part which is more developed but if yeah. like there's still a lot of places that aren't really accepting like that kind of yeah like stuff. the lgbt stuff yeah. yeah but for me i i prefer to just stay at my house and yeah, i only yeah. go out to meet my friends i don't i don't attend any conventions or parade or anything so i think for mm -hmm. me living in china it's fine so i guess that's why it's fine for me the political side but i think like in macau like it's is it slightly better in macau like like i'm guessing in macau there's also a firewall but it's not as like strong in macau yeah. or is it the same same firewall in macau i thought i thought I think, it was like a little bit different i think the majority of the problem for me is just the culture like people aren't really that accepting of mm -hmm. the lgbt community like in oh, really? both in macau. macau in in both macau and china i think it's definitely a lot oh, more okay. open in macau but mm -hmm. compared to like the us or any other places it's still very like mm -hmm. like people just really don't talk about it yeah 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 like like we've interviewed people from many different countries and that's still a big problem i feel like that's mm -hmm. still like a recurring thread that we run across that we that we try to talk about on the podcast like is the country that you live in accepting to lgbt because you know I, i'm kind of drawing a blank right now but like in thailand for example it's getting better um i think this is what like alder and kiochi told us like a year or two ago like the situation for lgbt people is getting better but there still is no like legal gay marriage in thailand yeah um it might be better compared to like 10 or 20 years ago but they're still getting there and then like here in taiwan uh well as you know it's the first uh country to um in asia to legalized gay marriage like that's like mm -hmm. that's not a that's not an issue in taiwan anymore you still have you still have people who oppose it but like full yeah. from my understanding it's like full like legal marriage is, is granted in in taiwan and uh like the situation in like japan and south korea i, I don't know like maybe that's a, that's another question for a future interview but yeah yeah i think i think a while ago hong kong was like trying to work on the lgbt mm -hmm. side but it kind of just stopped i don't know why <laughs> mm -hmm. i remember mm -hmm. a few years ago i was seeing ads about you know pro lgbt or like you know anti-racism stuff like just playing yeah. as ads but now you don't see them anymore they probably just mm -hmm. got china probably just stopped it <laughs> i think mm -hmm. so yeah but but have you been to hong kong before yeah i've been to Con hong kong a few times uh, and mm -hmm. i also lived there for a few weeks mainly just like just just, just to, visit to get or... the paperwork and visit some family there oh wow like, yeah does does your father still live in macau like does he still like work and live there or has he moved somewhere else yeah my my father is still working in macau and live there so he yeah, must like he it might... then <laughs> i guess if he's you know stationed. it is where he's from and he oh, has okay. a house there and that's why he's living there i think oh wow yeah. he has a house yeah yeah so, so, so like legally your father probably uh you'll have to explain to me but i guess he has a macau passport he has a macau citizenship and a hong kong mm -hmm. citizenship as well and that's how oh, i got wow. my hong kong citizenship which is through but him. He, if i'm not mistaken if you were born in macau or hong kong you can only choose one passport right like you cannot like you can't have a prc passport and a hong kong passport is, is that right i'm not sure about the passport thing but I just know that he has both 
Hong Kong citizenship and Macau mm-hmm. citizenship. And that's all I know. Mm-hmm. Sure, sure, sure. Again, I've never been to Macau um, or Hong Kong or China, <laughs> um, but I would definitely love to... I would love to go to either either of those places, any any of those places, I should say. Yeah. As you know, we already we already interviewed Dreamer Wolf. He, uh, you know, would definitely love more people to come to Macau. It's not very far from uh, Taiwan, uh, Macau yeah. and Hong Kong. It's like a one hour flight, maybe like like maybe one hour, 20, 30 minutes. Um, from my understanding, it's it's that close. So flying yeah. to Macau or or Hong Kong, like you, you could get there like in the morning and then like you wouldn't have to waste half your day flying. So uh, definitely something to look forward to in the future. <laughs> Cause that's what, that's what I was gonna say. Like if I ever go to Macau, I was like, man, maybe I can see you. But if you're gonna get if you're gonna go back to mainland China, that might be a little bit hard for me. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, because America, like right now, it's kind of hard for like Americans to get into China. I think. Yeah. Like, like the the the, vis- the visa process and all that. I yeah. think it's easier for us to get into Hong Kong and Macau. But I think, I think we still need visas though. I'm not entirely sure. I'll have to I'll have to double check that. Yeah. Um. Burger's not here right now because he's sick, but he has worked and lived in China for a year, hmm. and um, I think he liked it. Yeah, like he like if he didn't like it, he he would have went home after the first month. But he stayed like a whole year in um in China, and and so you know I I think he liked it. Uh, he also went to like one or two fur cons, but you know I'll let I'll let Burger tell you about that like some other day because uh, I don't yeah. I don't know I don't know everything that he did. I want to start talking more about like your art experience though. How did you get into art and like what was the inspiration? I think I already touched on that a little bit earlier, which is uh, it's through fan art of Zootopia. That's when I started to want to do art. Uh, So I always been drawing when I was a kid, but I kind of just stopped it after I was in like high school until I saw the movie Zootopia. And then when I looked at fan art, and the concept art of the movie and then I realized I could be an artist I could work from just drawing and then that's when I started to draw again and take it more seriously and then I've been drawing ever since so my biggest were, inspiration were, were, you, were you always like as a kid were you always the kind of person who's like you're like doodling in like a notebook yeah. or in class yeah so you're one of those <laughs> yeah, kids. I, I, I've, I've, I've had several of, the, of those kind of people in my classes like they don't listen to the lectures or they don't listen to, they're just kind of like drawing mm-hmm. in their notebook or or paper or whatever. Yeah, I was terrible at school. <laughs> <laughs> Never pay any attention oh, wow. to anything, just always mm-hmm. just minding my own business, <laughs> just mm-hmm. drawing. So so Zootopia was like the spark for you though. Yeah. Like that's what got you into drawing more and mm-hmm. more um like anthro characters. Yeah. No, uh, I I was gonna say that your art, whenever I scroll through your your Twitter, especially if it's like the city, like the urban urban landscape kind of art that you draw, it gave me like a Zootopia vibe actually. <laughs> really, a little bit. Like I don't know how to I don't know how to properly explain it, but like I felt like oh, it, it felt like I was in Zootopia maybe, like maybe because <laughs> the way it looked like I'm, I'm yeah, kind of hard to explain I guess. That's cool. I never thought about that before. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think other than Zootopia, just my other inspiration, just every other furry artist that I like, mm-hmm. I think. So, yeah, that's where most of my inspirations are from. Can you go ahead and say, like, tell us, like, what are some of your, uh, like, like maybe like a couple of your um, inspirations, artist inspirations? Uh, yeah, I think when I first started, it's not really furry artists. It's more just... Like artists in gen- general, I think one of my yeah. very first inspiration is this artist called Jake Parker. He has like this really unique ink style. Could you go ahead and, and then, send that to me? I'll, I'll take uh, a look yeah, at the, like his, his uh, Twitter. I don't think he has a Twitter. I think he has an Instagram. Let's see if I can find oh, okay, it. Okay. You said Jay Parker. Uh, here's a website from him. I'll just send you his website. Oh, Jake. Oh, Jake Parker. Jake Parker. Yeah. Okay. Uh, he's not really. He's definitely not a furry artist. He's just an artist. <laughs> <but> <laughs> yeah, yeah. When yeah, I looked yeah. at his art, I just I felt like yeah. it just connected me so much that I really wanted to draw like him one day. Mm-hmm. So that's my like my early inspiration. And he also does like a, a Rocket Raccoon comic, which is one of my oh wow cool, cool, uh, cool. my favorite like art style for the comic. 
And I think it's probably one of the only few comics I read uh, that I ever read because it's <laughs> Rocket Raccoon, yeah, yeah. which is also one of my favorite character of all time. Oh, uh, so so you watch yeah. Marvel movies? Yeah, I watch Marvel movies. Oh yeah, and, I love Marvel. Yeah, like I'm super <laughs> yeah. super into Marvel. Yeah, and like the Guardians of the Galaxy film is like the first Marvel movie movie where I was like, oh my god, this is such a good mm-hmm. movie, and I, I just yeah, really like that movie and the characters. And that's wow, when so, I really so started. That to was like the first Marvel, Marvel movie you watched? No, not my first, not the first that I watched, but it's the first one where it made me like Marvel, I guess. Oh, uh, okay, true. Yeah, 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 yeah. That one, like, I still, I like that more than the second one. Uh, yeah, that's I, I, actually. I, I can that, definitely I, say that. <laughs> yeah, it's still yeah, one yeah. of my favorite, like, even just movie of all time, not just Marvel movie. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. Like, I, I'm, I watched the movies in order. So I, I never skipped yeah. around. I could I could have skipped around, but like when I got to that movie, I was like, "Yep, I love it." And like I'll be <laughs> honest with you, part of the re I would say half the reason I watched it is because of Rocket. But I yeah, mean, I'm, a, I'm a furry. I'm a furry, right? So <laughs> you know. <laughs> yeah, I, I was the same. <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That movie for sure. I mean, <laughs> uh, like I know we're talking about like Marvel all of a sudden, but yeah, like Rocket Raccoon. He's voiced by Bradley Cooper. I think he's such mm-hmm. a cool character. <laughs> yeah, he's such a cool character, man. <laughs> Um, for sure, for sure. Yeah. You were saying that this, this, uh, artist, uh, Jake Parker has like a fan comic, I guess. No, not a fan uh, comic. He actually worked for Marvel to make a comic of Rocket Oh, Rocket. wow. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, is, is yeah. it like, like an official Marvel <laughs> yeah. comic? Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. We'll definitely link that, link that to us later. And then maybe mm-hmm. we can flash it on the screen and well, we'll credit him, of course, but yeah. I've, well, this is the first time I I'm hearing about that. Probably because I like I don't I don't read the comics as much. Like I know the Marvel comics, like they're out there, but I don't read them as much. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, that was like my very first artist inspiration. And there's mm-hmm. a lot other ones, but I kind of forgot their names. I don't really <laughs> I don't really remember artist name. I don't know if it's just me or people do that, but I maybe maybe, maybe do you like I, do you memorize faces better maybe. I just remember the art style better. Like generally, I would just yeah, I just yeah. look at people's art. I don't really know their names, so mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I couldn't really yeah. say many. Na- I think there's this Japanese artist that I really like as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'll send you his link. This artist is also one of my big inspiration. Um, here, this is also another artist that I reference a lot. Oh from, yeah, because he does yeah, like the, I think that, you that, that chibi <laughs> character, the sticker. Yeah, like yeah. like the the yeah 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 okay okay yeah and that's yeah I've seen that guy's like stickers artists. around yeah so he seems like a fur this guy seems like a furry artist though yeah I'm assuming definitely a furry artist <laughs> he's a freelance oh he's a freelance 2D artist for games and then mm-hmm. I guess he also does furry so 200k followers yeah yeah <laughs> yeah makes sense makes sense yeah I guess other than that just a lot of other furry artists a lot of them are actually. Uh, Chinese artists and mm-hmm. also a lot of them are like from the west so I think my art style is influenced by both part so I, I had people like tell me like told me that my art style is like a mix between like the western furry style and mm-hmm. also the the eastern furry style so I think yeah mm-hmm. that's probably why because I get my inspiration from both sides yeah yeah, yeah. So, yeah, yeah. I, w- I was going to say that, like, I do see the combination mm. of, like, Western and, and Eastern, or or at least what I would call kimono style. Um, mm. Maybe that's a little bit more, slightly slightly more accurate term. But, yeah, like, I do see, I kind of see what they mean. <laughs> <laughs> I, do, I do think, like, 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 I'm just looking at this one, right? Let me just share it on Discord. Um, it's the one with, like, he's holding, like, the, the uh, looks like a rifle. Um, yeah. he's holding assault rifle. So like this one, well, I didn't know, I, I didn't know you like to draw stuff like that, but that's really cool. <laughs> um, I feel like the eyes kind of remind me of kimono for some, the eyes and the yeah. mouth, but then like the, the hands, like the, the muscles, like the shoulders, maybe the tail, maybe the ears, <laughs> they kind of remind me a little bit more of, um, like cartoony, I would say like Western, yeah. Western cartoons. Um, at least, at least that's just my observation. Yeah. I think so. I don't. I don't really know because I just get my inspiration from like all over the place. So yeah. 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 
Do you have a certain style that you prefer, though? We're kind of jumping into the next question, but it's like, do you think that you prefer the kimono style or like, like, like what? Um, I don't really have a preference. I guess I just like whatever I find like appealing mm-hmm. to me. So yeah, definitely both, I would say. But yeah, majority of the artists I follow mm-hmm. are some Chinese artists, maybe some Japanese artists as well. And a lot of uh western artists as well yeah yeah <laughs> i think that's I, li- I like both like i mean i like both yeah. styles i mean they're they're you know they're like they have their i mean i don't i don't know how i would say it they just have their differences but like yeah. n- not not like the good or bad kind of thing but it's just like yeah they definitely um they they have their differences i mean because like i grew up on anime like like as a kid i was definitely one of those like anime kids not every kid liked anime in the u.s but i was definitely one of those kids who's like like for example pokemon yeah I watched a lot of Pokemon as a kid. I saw some Digimon as well. And then like I of course like I, I grew up on Naruto. I grew up on Naruto. I grew up on on Bleach. Uh, these are like the the really like classic ones. Yeah. Um the newer stuff like like if you're talking about like Demon Slayer or um like Attack on Titan, I've watched a little bit of each but I haven't like committed to it. Like I haven't like completed any of the um any of the seasons. I think mainly cuz like as I grew older like I just became more busy. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Um, yeah, so, like, I just have stuff and, and work to do, so it's, like, I, I can't sit down for, like, five hours a day anymore. Um, I actually watch anime as well, uh, but not oh, yeah. as much anymore, but mm-hmm. back then, I actually, uh, one of the first anime I ever watched was One Piece, because it was mm-hmm. playing on the TV, so I was, I, I would just watch it every day, <laughs> and I, then... st- I still, I still keep up a little bit with it by the oh, week. Oh, really? I don't watch the anime, but I just like read on the wiki. Like every other mm. year, I was like, "Oh, it's it's like twenty twenty four. Let me go read what's up, what happened in <laughs> One Piece on the wiki." Because I, I just I can't watch. I really cannot dedicate my life to One Piece anymore. <laughs> yeah. So like, like I like they have the time skip now, right? Um, they have the time skip, and then like we just got introduced to like, well not ju- well not just got introduced, but like I just like saw some footage of like Fujitora last year, the uh, like the new the new admiral. So yeah. Mm. Yeah, I I've stopped following One Piece like <laughs> I don't know like years. It's ago, crazy. So, it's crazy yeah. long. It's like it's it, it's probably like the it's probably going to be the world's longest anime at this point. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Y- y- yeah. It's like it's all all the early episodes. Like I almost feel like it's not worth watching. But I mean, mm. who knows anymore? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I never really wanted to draw because of anime. Like when mm-hmm. I watched. So I, I guess I'm not really the big fan of like just the pure anime style, I guess. Mm-hmm. So I definitely prefer like either a bit of a mix or the Western style a bit more. Yeah. I guess not really the anime style. Did you have any like formal training though? Like like for example in college, like what what, what did you do? Did you study art or no, I, I wish I had the opportunity to study art, but no, I oh, it's okay. all self-taught, yeah. Oh, wow. Uh, so what did you study in college? English. <laughs> I know it's oh, such yeah, a yeah. boring subject, but yeah, my... Yeah, well, that, ex- that explains why you're good at English right now. <laughs> you're actually <laughs> speaking pretty fluently, I would say. Oh, thank you. But the, the thing is, I never wanted to study English, but... Oh, really? Because my dad found that I'm good at speaking english and then he said why don't you go study english like yeah sure why Mm -hmm, not mm -hmm. and then yeah i just studied english but i never really graduated (laughs) so oh really yeah it's a bit of a waste of time (laughs) so i guess like i'm assuming that you dropped out but then like i I was just gonna ask like is that like cost reasons or were you just like uninterested or guess i'm just not interested and also i would just i would rather just start working for my dad yeah, yeah, yeah. than just keep mm-hmm. studying for something that I don't really like, I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That makes sense. Uh, when it comes to English, I was mostly self-taught, but I definitely learned some from school because it was a mandatory curriculum in high school. Yeah. So I learned some from school, but most of the... I learned most of it from just watching movies and YouTube by myself. So yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, again, I think your English is really impressive. So, I mean, we're having a conversation and, and you know, like I'm speaking pretty fast and I'm using like a lot yeah. of slang. So, you know, I think that means that your your, your English is good. Well, I think your English is better than mine. 
<laughs> I think your Chinese is pretty good as well. Yeah, like from what I, I, hope, I like hope that it sentence, is. it sounded like actually really good. So yeah, I think your Chinese. You is you you almost never speak to me in Chinese. I think every time I speak to you in Chinese, you just want in English. <laughs> because I don't I don't yeah, that, talk to I don't talk to people with Chinese online. I guess oh, most wow. of my online experience is with English because. The only time I would use Chinese is with my like IRL friends. Yeah, or like your dad, or or like yeah, my, parents, or, or my your, dad, your family, my classmates. But like yeah, uh, like I said, my boyfriend is from the UK, so yeah, I right, right, right. Pretty much everyone I talk to online is I speak English to them, so mm -hmm. I don't really speak that much Chinese online. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You you mentioned that. A lot of what you've learned for art is self-taught. So, how did you get started, though? Like, were you like, did you look up YouTube videos, like art tutorials? So, like, how did you get started, though? Like, f with with teaching yourself. Um, when I first started, definitely I didn't really have a goal or even know how to start. So I would just start to draw, and then just look at tutorial on YouTube kind of aimlessly so I the first couple of years I didn't really have a lot of improvements and then the after like a few years of just learning I started to realize like to learn art by yourself you really need to have like a plan planned mm -hmm. out what you want to learn and have like goals that you want to reach every step yeah. of the way plans like, to, like, like check checkpoints yeah, to, yeah like, like, or like or how am I gonna how how long am I gonna spend learning this subject yeah. or this like technique and then like okay how long i learn yeah mm -hmm. like there's one art tip that everyone gives to like artists which is like just draw i mean mm -hmm. it yeah it would work but if you really want to improve you cannot just draw you have to have a goal in mind when you draw so so that's an advice i i would yeah. give to any self-taught artist like what my plan what i have been following is basically if you're just starting, just learn to draw geometry and then mm -hmm. learn to draw anatomy. Like study every part of the muscle and how to learn how to structure a drawing. That I think is mm -hmm. the the basic thing you need to learn. And once you learn that, learning everything else would become like easier. So that's how I've been learning by myself basically. Just you you really remind me of like one of one of our guests that we just had like what a, like a couple months ago. It's actually Cheetah Paws. Have you have you seen his art? Have you followed him? Um, I don't think so. What's their name? Uh, name uh it's he's a really big uh, name in the fandom. Oh. Uh, it's it's a uh, Cheetah Paws. Um, let me give you the Twitter link. Okay, I just sent, uh here in the uh, Discord chat. Oh, oh yeah, I think I've seen their art before. Yeah, he. I mean, he's yeah. a pretty big name in the in the you know in the in the in the fandom. So, yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's cool. Yeah, so I I would say like like he you remind me of him because like he's an art teacher, um, oh. and uh like it, he's interesting because like he works part time as a as an art teacher, but then he does like the freelance stuff whenever he's free. So like he, if I'm not mistaken, he finished up Fernal Equinox in Canada like two weeks ago i think one or two weeks ago because they well because he was the goh he was the he was the goh for that con and mm -hmm. then um his friend xiao d is actually my roommate and they were traveling or i think they were traveling around canada i think now they're in the u.s and so like xiao d like he was helping cheetah paw sell his uh merchandise there so he's one so cheetah paw is interesting because he's one of those guys like he has like a part-time job and then whenever he's free, he'll just focus on the furry stuff as like his freelance stuff. So he's kind of doing both. Yeah. Yeah, that's cool. But but like he's an art teacher, so like he was all you know like he's used to like teaching art, right? Like the stuff mm. that you mentioned. I feel like you and him would get along <laughs> actually. <laughs> yeah, like yeah. Um, because like I said, he's you know he's a teacher, so he definitely you know he definitely is used to like telling people about these like concepts and ideas yeah. in, in in art. Yeah. Have you talked to any other like furry artists in China though? Because I know you said like didn't you say you followed some of them, but like have you ever like talked to them or you know just to chat or whatever? Um, no, because I I don't really know how to. 
because I, I guess you, I'm you, you definitely seem like a yeah. shy guy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> when I first talked to you, like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I am. I, I, I mean, you shy, you would you would say that you're like more introverted, right? Yeah, I'm, I'm definitely a introverted person. <laughs> well, me too. Me too. <laughs> Believe it or not, have... I know you, I know you're gonna say no, but yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, you don't sound like an introvert. <laughs> oh, sh- oh sh- yeah. But, <laughs> but I guess maybe you are. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, I, I mean, but, I mean. The long story short is that like I'm used to wearing a mask, like mm-hmm. like like doing doing like meeting people and and doing the interviews and stuff. Like it's something I trained myself, but yeah. it's also like I do put on a mask where it's like I do have to like act. I do mm-hmm. need to yeah. act and kind of fake being an extrovert. But in general, like like. I like to be alone. I like to have some alone time. Um, I like to have my thoughts to myself. I, I cannot be in the presence of people for, for the whole day. For example, like I do need to recharge. So to to, to kind of say it simply. Yeah, I think I'm definitely the same as well. That's why I don't have a lot of friends. <laughs> Sounds sad. <laughs> oh, but... don't say it like that. <laughs> <laughs> I do have. Am a I your few... friend? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You're my friend. <laughs> yeah. I do have some artist friends, but they're just not from China. So okay, okay. I would prefer to just have a few friends other than like having yeah. a lot of friends because it's yeah, easier yeah. for for me to just maintain the relationship because I don't really know how to like yeah. actually maintain a relationship. So good I point. Guess, good uh, point. Yeah. So uh, I have three artist friends, and that's pretty much all the furry friends I know. Well, like, I was asking. I was asking that question. Um, like the, the point of asking the question was more like overall, would you say like those Chinese furry artists overall, they tend to draw in the kimono style though, right? Like this sort of like anime style. Mm, yeah, or definitely a, a mix little or... bit, but I think there are still a lot of other artists that have a mix. Mm-hmm. I think, um, for example, this artist I follow, it's, yeah, yeah. his name is like their Twitter name is Tangzu, but. Uh, I think Super they Amy. they definitely have a mix mix style. I would say mm-hmm. like maybe more Western than Asian. Yeah, if you look at their art, it's definitely not like only the anime style. Oh, uh, he thing. drew Hell of Boss. Yeah, <laughs> that's cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah I, I I totally know what you mean. But definitely still a like a not a mixture, I guess. Yeah, cause I see like like this one. Uh, maybe because the proportions look a little bit more realistic. Like this, this is like what a like a leopard kind of. Yeah. Like this looks this looks kimono to me. Mm-hmm. And then yeah, I'm just like scrolling through. He looks like a, 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 he seems to like the fantasy kind of vibe. Yeah. Yeah. This this artist um, Tang Zhu. Mm-hmm. So you're saying that you probably wouldn't like approach this person. <laughs> like you wouldn't say, oh hey hey I'm. I'm a furry artist. I'm a Chinese furry artist. I live in <laughs> Chongqing. Do you want to hang out? <laughs> um, part of me wants to, but part of me also like don't want to, cause like I'm mm-hmm. like I'm scared to socialize. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> like uh, I, I know also, how you feel. Um, and also I just feel like I'm fine with just the amount of friends that I have now. So I don't. I'm not really yeah in the mood to seek out more friends or. Mm-hmm. to make connections but I, I do think i might have to in the future because i think in this career you do need to have connections so maybe i'll do that in the future but as of mm-hmm. right now i don't i don't think i would approach any other artists at the minute life is all about decisions right i mean like yeah. if you're if it's your decision to only have like a certain group of friends or a certain handful of friends then i say you know like go for it i mean that's like if that's what makes you happy and that's what you want, because there is something to be said about focusing more on what matters in your life. And so yeah. like just focusing on the people that matter to you. I mean, that, that sounds, that sounds like a, a good thing to me. Um, yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. Well, what about like the, the Chinese furry fandom overall though? Like how connected you are, how connected are you to them? I should say. Definitely not very connected. Because <laughs> mm-hmm. like, like you mentioned, said, you talk to like mainly like people outside of China, right? Yeah. And also I'm just not, I'm an introvert. So I'm not really, I don't really like reach out to other people and the fandom and stuff. I kind of mm-hmm. just like to just look, enjoy people's art. I think that's 
what I mainly focused on in the fandom, which is just the art part and like everything else I'm not really that connected yeah. to. Like fur suiting or furry conventions. I'm not I don't really yeah. have a desire to go to those, but I do think it's cool that people do that sort of things. But I think for me, I would just prefer to focus on the art side of the fandom because that is what got me into the fandom in the first place. So I think yeah, you know, that is what I mainly focused on and what I'm interested in the most. So I'm not very connected to the fandom at all. So so say. like even going to something like, let's say Super Furry Fusion, like even going to a Chinese convention... Like you don't you you would not go, yeah. Like Super Furry not. Fusion, that's in Shanghai. <laughs> Maybe if I have some Chinese furry friends one day, and they would want to go with me, then I would probably go. But well, what, what if I go? If I go to Shanghai, would you would you go? Sure. <laughs> all right, all right, dude. Well, I mean, well, I mean, there's also like, well, I do want to let you know that, like, I mean, I do live in Taiwan, so like, if yeah. you ever come to here for Infernity, then you know that's also a thing as well because yeah. like because you can speak chinese so you can communicate yeah. with uh with taiwanese furs uh there's one thing that i'm kind of curious about taiwan mm -hmm. <laughs> i don't know if it's okay to ask how are the taiwanese people to like the chinese people because i know at least on the internet people from china and people from taiwan are always arguing about yeah, yeah. stuff so <laughs> yeah. i'm just I'm just wondering if I come to Taiwan and people recognize my accent that I'm from the mainland, like that I'm from China, would they like be hostile towards me or not? Like that's um, something that I wanted to know. I mean, you're asking a really good question and I definitely cannot speak for all Taiwanese people, but I think that if you say you're a furry and there's nothing else, right? Like we're not talking about politics. If you just say you're mm -hmm. furry, you're here to enjoy the convention. I think they're okay with that. I say be yourself. Like don't, yeah, you, okay. you don't have to fake who you are. You don't need to fake your identity. I think that in general, Taiwanese, Taiwanese furries are pretty open. I have met some Chinese furries who like live in Canada. Like they are like students, like they're overseas students living in Canada. Mm -hmm. And like their accent is pretty obvious. They like they definitely sound like they're from China. But like, you know, what's funny is that like um, in, in, an, in a discord server, I'm not going to say who's discord, like I won't say their name, but like there's a discord server that I usually go to it's actually run by Hong Kong fur and yet he still plays video games with like Chinese furries and Taiwanese furries and other Hong Kong furries. So like he, to, to me, I think that's a good thing, right? Like no one, no one's there to argue. Like we're just playing video yeah. games. So we're not, we're not going to argue about like politics or whatever, but like it, I find it so strange. Like I'm an American fur, he's a Hong Kong fur. And then sometimes we play games with like Chinese furs and, and <laughs> other uh, Taiwanese furs, but it's like no one ever argues. <laughs> <laughs> But I can't say by experience, like, I cannot say that, that you would have the same experience, but I think, like, I think you'll be fine, right? Like, no one's going to, like, no one's going to go out there and get you. <laughs> yeah. At least I hope they don't, yeah. Well, I, I mean, because, like, 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 Burger, like, he's an American fur, and he went to Super Furry Fusion, like, in 2018 or 2019, I think. And he said he had a decent time, but obviously he's not Chinese, but, like, he didn't say anything bad about it. Hmm. I mean, it's a different situation, but like, I, I think like the Chinese furs treated him well, so I, I, I would imagine the Taiwanese furs would, would, would be okay with you. Okay, that's good to know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I haven't been to well, well, like I said, I haven't, I have not been to China, but I am Asian American though, so I'll probably blend in. They'll probably, yeah, they might just think that like I'm Hua Yi or Hua Xiao, but like, you know, <laughs> I'm, I'm not, but they might, they might think I am, but yeah. So then, like, oh, so even while you were living in Macau, like, you never got to hang out with any, like, the local furries? No, I I have hang out with one person, but, like, just once, because they said they're from Macau, and they said I really want to hang out with me, and we just went out wow. to have McDonald's, and that's it. That's, like, my yeah, only McDonald's. experience with, <laughs> with the... McDonald's. <laughs> this is a good the, choice, McDonald's. Yeah. <laughs> Of all, like of all the other food options, I mean, because I feel like Macau has a lot of good food, and there's more than just McDonald's. But mm -hmm. like, hey, do you want to eat me at McDonald's? Yeah, I guess that they said they didn't know where else to go, and I didn't really know where else we could go. So yeah, we just went to yeah, McDonald's. Yeah. <laughs> but I, I, I still want to say though, like I do think that like your English is quite good though. So I would imagine that like online or maybe IRL it's pretty easy for you to like get along and talk to like foreign furries, right? Yeah. 
because mm-hmm. like all my furry friends aren't from China. So yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's it's not really hard for me to talk to foreign furries for me. Yeah. I mean I mean well like like I said, you have like really good English, so I mean I think that's like that's that's definitely a boon. That's definitely a um a, a benefit, yeah. So you would you would be going back to Chongqing though, right? Like like you mentioned that you wouldn't go back to Macau because like you don't work for your dad anymore. So you would yeah. you go back to Chongqing? Uh, I'll probably live there for a while until I sort out how I'm going to move to the UK because that is my goal. Unless it change mm-hmm. in the future, but yeah, for now, once I'm back, I would probably yeah, I'm most likely to be staying in Chongqing. So because because you want to like live and work in the uk and like i guess ideally you would live with your boyfriend right mm-hmm. yeah yeah also my boyfriend also thinking about moving to china so oh if if he decided to move to china then we would probably just stay in china so wow well, that's we, dedication I, I, yeah <laughs> that's a lot of de- well i mean like he, if he's willing to say that like i feel like that's a he's very committed i guess mm. yeah that's, and i think that's a good thing I think you also like it because after what I've told him about China, <laughs> so he definitely opened up to like what China is as a country. Because mm-hmm. I guess I think China as a country is a good place to live in, even with all the political stuff. Like depends yeah. on what kind of life you want to live. Like you are able to live a decent life in China, even with yeah all the political stuff. So yeah. So we, I, I, I really haven't decided my what my future is, but mm-hmm. I would most likely stay in Songqing once I'm back. But like, if you do live in in the UK and you and you decide to live and work there, like, do you want to become a UK citizenship a uh, citizen, or or would you just work there like, like like permanent residence? If I ever gonna gonna move to the UK, I think I would probably become a UK citizen. Yeah. I think that's if I'm have a job here, but it's yeah, not. yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Cause that's yeah. Still like I don't, I don't, I don't know how hard it is to become a UK citizen. Like I, I think it's, I uh, yeah, I don't know. I never looked it up. Yeah. Yeah, I think I I need to live here for at least five years before I could apply. So mm-hmm. it's not really not that easy. I think. Yeah, that sounds that sounds like I I actually forgot the requirements for the u.s citizenship but i think it's like it's roughly the same it's i think it's easier though i think i think it's it's like relatively easier uh but it does help if you're like married like it, yeah, yeah if you're married to an american it does make like the process go a lot faster i think mm. um but but anyway yeah like so so well my next question here is well i think i already know the answer by now but you know have you been to any cons before uh no <laughs> you you should really i think you should try at least once like like i i mean i don't know i don't know if you're famous in china like in, like in the chinese furry fandom but i think like you should definitely try going to a convention at least once yeah. i think you might like it actually yeah maybe i'll like it but i just don't really have any friends to go there with unless you want to go yeah, yeah. with me one day yeah. but. <laughs> I, well, I mean i mean i i would tell you right now is definitely it would probably be easier if you come to taiwan <laughs> yeah i if yeah. if it's possible i i think i would come to taiwan if there's yeah. a con there well there and, is a con uh there's inferno well there's actually two cons i'll tell i'll tell you right now that there's two cons one of them is called fermits um hmm. in i think that's like august that's still several months away. It's like what four to f- four months away, and then mm. the other con is uh, the other con is in October. That one's called Infernity. So that's mm. if I'm guessing you're going to be moving back to Chongqing. But like when you go back to China, you'll be in Chongqing. But like if you can find like a decent flight to Taiwan, either in August or October, I mean, I'll most likely be here. So I, I'll definitely I'll I'll meet you, man. I'll yep. meet up with you. <laughs> Um, I mean, I can send you the links later. Like, like a uh, burger will yeah. probably be like my co-host. A burger will probably be here, so we 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 can the three of us can definitely hang out. Um, yeah, yeah, we we can definitely look at that. I mean, I really cannot speak about the con experience in China, though. Like, that's a different, that's definitely a different beast. Um, ha ha ha! Mm-hmm. But that's definitely a different, different, different animal. Um, burger could probably tell you more. Like, maybe later, burger burger can tell you more about his experiences mm. um 
it's funny because I've I, I've I've met many people who have been to cons, so it's kind of weird to like talk about a person talk talk about a con to a person who hasn't been to a con. But it's definitely different. It's it's different. There's a lot of there's a lot of jaina. <laughs> there's a lot of otaku's, but like uh, you know, a lot of what <laughs> otaku's jaina. Yeah, like a lot oh. of nerds. Oh, yeah, yeah, but like I mean, it's all it's all you know. It's because we're all nerdy, but mm-hmm. like it's not a bad thing though. Have have you have you ever thought about like selling your merch at cons though? Like, have you ever thought about like doing keychains or like art prints or like doujinshis? The uh, not like a Not really, because I don't think I'm at that level yet <laughs> with my oh, really? follower count. I don't know. I honestly, <laughs> I don't know if I have the fan base for it. But maybe one day, I th- I think mm-hmm. I I do like making like clothes. I like designing clothes, oh, really? so maybe like, like t-shirts. Yeah, you. I a lot of times I would literally go to like a custom t-shirt like shop on Taobao and just make my own t-shirt sometimes. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I think maybe one day I would like to sell my merch. What about like, um, what about accessories like, I don't know, like scarves or like bandanas things. Uh, what about like those kind of things? I have made a couple of stickers before. Mm-hmm. So maybe I could sell those. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Stickers are, you know, small thing. Like, especially because, like, yeah. the cheaper it is, usually, like, it might be more enticing. Because mm-hmm. you make something really expensive, it's maybe not a lot of people would buy that. But yeah. it just depends on the market, I guess. But, like, like you don't, you never thought about doujinshis. Like, uh, like, just comics? Yeah, it's usually self-published comic. It doesn't have to be, like, 100 pages. It could be, like, 20 or 30. Uh. But it's, like, self-published comic. It could be, it doesn't necessarily have to be related to media. It doesn't, like, for example, it doesn't have to be about Kung Fu Panda. It could be, like, yeah. your own characters. But it's like, it's like a catch-all term, I think. It's like a, like a general term in Japan for, like, a self-published comic. Okay. Um, I never really thought about it, but, um, yeah, maybe. <laughs> I do have yeah. some ideas for, like, comics and stuff that I want to make, but. I, I think I you have really... a. You have a really good art style that would be <laughs> f- suitable for comics, I think. At least in my opinion. Hmm. Even if it's just like a 10-page comic or like maybe 20 pages, I guess. That'd be a little bit more like substantial. But like if it was like a 20-page comic, I, th- I think that I think you have a shot. <laughs> yeah, I think. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> mm-hmm. Sure, sure, sure. Here's a Here's a really classic question. So like the general public in china what's their perception of furry though like do they do they know what it is i think from what i've known the only people that would know about furries are the people that that like the like art side of things like people Mm -hmm. who like anime they would know the furry art style or something like that but i i don't really know because i don't spend a lot of times in chinese social media so but i think from what I've known is people don't really see it as cringe. They just see it as yeah. another fandom, I think. At least from yeah. what I've known. Compared to like like in the Western side where people say oh furries are cringe and stuff. That's not really in China, I think. But mm-hmm. but I, I, I feel cringe. I feel like because like, like people in China know what like anime is, right? Yeah. Like they know, they know what, anime, what anime is. They know yeah, what's it called again? Like A C G or whatever. Like you have a term for that, right? The, like ACG. So like, do they think that like furry is just like a subgroup of anime, or or like, yeah, is there is there like a misunderstanding there, or like a perception? I don't know. I don't have a lot of friends that are in that circle in China, oh, really? so I don't have a lot of friends, <laughs> so I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, <laughs> can't really talk much about that. <laughs> Yeah, I I mean like oh, I I was just curious um because like well in Taiwan I feel like some people like they just I don't think they would mistake furry for anime. I think they know the I think they would know the difference, but like if they saw a fursuiter, I think they would th- they would think that the fursuiter is like a mascot. Is that is that like the same thing in China, do you think? Yeah, I think it's probably the same. It's not really well known like the furry stuff. Mm-hmm. So, it would probably be the same, I guess. Because, like, um, when I try to explain what furry is to a Taiwanese person, like like a non-furry Taiwanese person, I would usually say something like cosplay or anime mm-hmm. convention. If I'm trying to explain fursuits, at least, I try to say, like, yeah. okay, this is kind of like a costume, right? Um, mm-hmm. Very similar to, like, a cosplay costume. 
And so like we go to this convention and we hang out and like we sell merch and I don't know, we go to panels, that kind of stuff. That's kind of been like a recurring thread on the podcast, though. Like I, I we, we've said this in like almost every single episode, but like like in Taiwan, especially. And I think Japan as well. Like if the if the general public saw a fursuit, they would think that it's a cosplayer or maybe a mascot. <laughs> <laughs> For, yeah, yeah, I think yeah, it's definitely the same here. Um, I remember mm-hmm. when I first show my dad my art, he doesn't know it's furry art. He just thought it's it's just art. <laughs> like when I <laughs> yeah, first yeah, told yeah. him that I want to do freelance like commission as like my job, and then I just showed him my my art. He just said, oh, "Are these like like cartoon stuff?" And then <laughs> 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 he just didn't even know what furry is. So I think that's the majority of people in China just don't even know what it is, I think. Yeah. To me, it sounds like it's getting like a, it's like, it's like there's no like discrimination or there's no like, you it's furry. Like it sounds yeah. like, like Chinese people would, wouldn't, they wouldn't think that way. So I think that's a good thing. Yeah. I think to even people who know, they, they just think it as another fandom. Cause yeah. even, even like the anime fandom doesn't have like the negative like too the, ne- negative. the negative connotation yeah in uh like the the u.s or the western side because yeah most people watch anime so it's it's normal to be an anime fan so people won't really make fun of you or like calling you yeah, a yeah. for liking anime in china so i think it's the same thing for like the furry thing as well people just don't yeah, really yeah. discriminate on that mm-hmm I mean, I think that's a good environment to live in, though. Like, like you do want to live in an environment. You want you want to be in an environment where, like, it's a little bit more like open minded. Because yeah, um, cause, yeah I, I do agree. In the U.S., like, there's still like there's still like a negative connotation of like, okay, this guy watches anime. He's like a what's what's a weeaboo or he's like an otaku. <laughs> so it's yeah. like I I still I I still think it's there. I still think like watching anime in the U.S. like it's not it's not mainstream. It's not mm-hmm. what I would consider like mainstream, and so like there's still like that negative connotation. Yeah. So like, if you have like an anime poster in your in your room or whatever, like people, I I don't think they'll think it's weird, but they think it's like like quirky, interesting <laughs> or quirky, but not like not necessarily disgusted with it. They just think like, oh, okay, this guy likes anime. Yeah, I guess that's, that's what I say about that. So Peach, we really just have one last question for you for this interview. Uh, thank you so much for you know being uh, willing to talk about China and, and your experiences and 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 getting into the furry fandom and, and art and all that. This question is just it just goes back to the topic about art, which is what is like your best piece of advice that you have for aspiring artists. Um, I think my best piece of advice is for like new artists is definitely don't care about your likes on social media because that Mm -hmm. would really i think to be a good artist you need to have a good mindset like i don't even know if i'm considered a good artist i just i'm just (laughs) a self-taught artist but i think if you really want to do art as a career maybe don't see it as a career at first you need to do it by just just because you like it you know if you don't mm-hmm. even enjoy drawing that much, you just want it like be an artist, but you don't really enjoy drawing, then you should you definitely shouldn't be an artist, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. Cause a lot of people struggles with like not getting enough likes or enough likes on their art on social media, but that's definitely something that you should not care about when you first started started. I started posting on social media for like like four years or something, but I only started to get likes, like, get followers since, like, last year. So mm-hmm. you're probably not going to see any likes when you first started. And your art is probably not going to be good for the first couple of years. So if you don't enjoy it, then I don't think you can be an artist. I don't know if I'm making sense or not. So basically, what I'm trying to say is, if you want to be an artist, you definitely have to like drawing no matter how bad the the drawing that you can make now is right. as long as you like it you will be good at art one day but it's just gonna take years so just don't care about likes don't care about your follower count just draw until you know you reach there i guess i think that's good advice 
Yeah. I think it's good advice. Yeah. I think you have to like something first before you really commit to it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So with that being said, how can we follow you? How, how, how do we follow you? And, and, and do you have any social media that we can follow? Uh, yeah. Um, you can follow me on Twitter and Instagram. Uh, and the app is... Instagram? You, yeah. I didn't know that. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, okay. The ad for my uh, Instagram and Twitter is the same. It's at peachjuice underscore art on both platform. So you can follow me there. Mm-hmm. All right, we'll flash that on the screen. Yeah. Is it because you like peach? You like peaches? That's actually a funny story. I probably should have talked about it earlier. Right. Well, tell us now. Tell, yeah, tell, like, okay, if you so can tell us. All right. The reason my name is Peach is because when I made my persona, like I said, I just add everything I like and I never really had a goal. So I made my character and then I realized the color is like Peach and I really like Peach. Mm-hmm. So why not just call myself Peach Juice? <laughs> do, you, do you drink Peach Juice every day? Do you actually eat or drink peaches every day? Actually, I don't like peach juice. <laughs> oh, all right. I don't think I ever but, had that peach juice. Yeah, like, maybe I have. It seems rare. It's not very good. I've had good. peaches. I've had peaches. Peaches is good. I like peaches, yeah, peaches but peaches I don't I don't like peach juice. So yeah. Peach juice. <laughs> That's funny. That's funny. Yeah. Oh yeah. So yeah. Okay, so is what was, was it peach juice? Um, peach juice underscore art. Is that underscore? It. Like yeah, the, under, yeah, yeah, that's an underscore. Yeah, yeah. Peach juice underscore arts. Got it. Got it. Mm-hmm. All right. Thank you so much for being on Thank the you. podcast. <laughs> Thank you for having me on your podcast. We really appreciate your time. Thank you so much for talking mm-hmm. more about um, growing up in China. Thank you for telling us about art, how how you got into the fandom, and your future plans. Of course, we hope to see you in the future. I mean, I mean, like I said, Burger is the one who has more experience with China. So, like, he mm-hmm. could probably tell you more about, like, Super Furry Fusion and all that. Uh, for me, like, I have more experience, like, in Thailand and and, um, and Taiwan. But, yeah, would love to see you at a future con, whether that be in uh, China or Taiwan or, or Japan or Thailand. So, definitely keep in touch. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much. All right. Okay. Thank you. And that has been another episode of the Fox and Burger podcast. I'm Michael the Matcha Fox, your co-host. And we'll see you in the next episode. Bye-bye. Bye.